So in the past few days, the bird has been flying out outside of the city here because it's getting pretty cold. I'm doing the same. What's up, Twitter? Welcome back to Mexico in Playa del Carmen. I've been here a couple of days, and this video is going to be in two parts. First of all, a recap of the past few days. It's been like four days I've been here. Not doing many videos so far, but I want to go back on those days. And then we'll go to the weekly review. If you want to go straight to that review of the market and trades from last week, then check out the timestamp over here. It's going to be linked below as well. You just click on that. You're going to be exactly at the right spot. But if you want to see the whole travel, which I would recommend, then let's get to that right now. So I came from Montreal a few days ago on October 9th. I was traveling. We left pretty early to come to the airport and then fly here. Good morning, traders. Welcome back to Montreal. Today I'm leaving for Cancun in Mexico. It's going to be a different travel in Mexico once again. I left like Mexico two, two weeks ago. But I'm coming back because it's like so hot and so cool and nice and enjoyable. I'm with my mom, who's coming for a couple of days with me. And we'll get started with that day right away. We arrived here in the afternoon. So that's it guys, we made it to Playa del Carmen. We'll come back to Mexico. It's been only like a week, no, two weeks that I was last here, but in a different city, of course. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about like the costs of the apartment and the hotels I'm staying in. This one's pretty cheap, so it's a full kind of studio apartment. For the cost of around, I think, $30 per night, which is, I think, pretty reasonable for that whole studio. And the cool thing about this is that you can cook some meals for yourself, which is really cool, because you can eat more healthy and stuff, so that's awesome. Now we're gonna try to go out and buy some food and explore a little bit the area. And the first day was just like kind of going to different places, getting groceries, stuff like that, walking around, getting at the beach late where there was no light. So that was cool. Then the second day was kind of a beach day. So I didn't really film that, but we went on the beach, getting some sun, some drinks. That was pretty cool. Now on the third day, that's where the fun happens. Today we're doing a tour on Cozumel, so we have to take a ferry, go there, it's gonna be a pretty good and packed day. So let's get started right away with that day. It all started with getting on the boat to go on the other side of the island. Ferry now to go to Cozumel, that looks way more to a bar than a ferry. It's pretty interesting, have a look.
once we got there, we had a bit of trouble finding the guide for the tour. <laughs> We're waiting for the tour guide, of course they are on Mexican time, so a little bit later than usual. So we'll just wait a little bit and yeah. There was a bit of a mess and it put us on a different tour because of the fact that our guide was not there for that day apparently. And we got on a boat to do some diving, which was really really awesome. And here we are on the boat. Really, really recommend it. I had to kind of force my mom a little bit to go because she didn't want to go first, but she managed to do it and she really liked it. So for anyone, highly recommend it for sure. So this was awesome. And then for the afternoon, we had a car that we could rent. The only car left at the place was basically an old Jeep. <laughs> Which was fine, I didn't have really high standards for that car. We went to do a tour of the island and we found a couple of really, really nice beaches at the back of Cozumel, so kind of at the top of the island. If you look at it on the map from, from here, Plata del Carmen. That was nice. And then on the way back though, we got stopped by a policeman who told us we were over the limit. I was driving, I was at 86 kilometers per hour on an 80 kilometers per hour road. And so he told us we'll get a ticket of like 80 US dollar, which of course I knew was stupid. I kind of argued a little bit. He seemed like fair, friendly and stuff, didn't seem to matter that much. And then I told him something like, prices in Mexico are not that high for ticket, it's impossible. And then he got back to his car, said I'll talk to my boss, came back a few minutes after and said, okay, it's gonna be fine for today, so no worries. Just be careful, there's animals here, and you have to respect the speed limit. So, that was, that was funny. And so, of course, a scam, but the lesson in this is that you have to stand for what you believe in. If you believe in something, don't just short yourself and pay for whatever fine he gives you, especially in Mexico, right? That won't work, bad idea. You will get a way higher fine, and that's not gonna be cool. And of course, there's like plenty of stories with that, but this is only one. Uh, yeah, so just notice when you come to Mexico, I guess. That was it for these couple of days. Now, yesterday my mom left back to Canada. She was here only for three days. And so I'm gonna be alone here for the rest of the, uh, the trip. And that's gonna be it for this travel part. All right, weekly review. So last week, I shared with you guys something interesting I was working on, and I wanna kind of go back on it, try to see the results of it. Although one week in trading is not enough to see the result, especially when you swing trade, you better look for more than that. But I wanna go back and show you, because this week I didn't trade much, I was traveling a lot from what you saw before, and I didn't have the chance to trade too much. Most of the trade setup that happened this past week happened when I was in the plane, so I couldn't really take them. But the auto trade robot I had on MT4, which I installed on my VPS because I have a Mac here, you cannot use MT4 too much. It's not really good. That EA took the trade and it's still on the more account. I still want to see the results, see that there's not too many mistakes in the setup it takes. But for now, I'm quite happy with what I see. So I want to show you guys the results. Right now, there are quite a few orders open and they're not closed yet. As you can see, there was, if we go back into account history, there was quite a lot of them. Okay. And the account, I believe, started like we started last week, but this is like the week earlier. I think I placed the E on the chart and took a trade like randomly because it was not properly placed the week before. So if we get the if we forget these results, right, this is minus this is the last as kind of here, I believe. Okay. And the rest was kind of good. It took the trade that that it was supposed to take. I think I think we won't go to the zones because I've done that last week they are going to be pretty much the same. I'll go through them myself afterwards, see if anything changed. But I want to show you the trade. I think you guys prefer that than the zones. So let me open a chart. This one here was on the 9th. And I think the 9th was when I was on the plane, exactly. So I took the plane on the 9th of October in the morning. Okay, And I was like pretty much not good to trade all day because of the travel and stuff and going coming here and stuff. 
so no trade for that but you can just like do the trade and you will see that there's two orders for every trade right there are two sell stop the same size that's because of the take profit we take two orders close one at one to one the other one at three to one okay so we have two take profits and the best way to do this is to have like multiple positions otherwise it's a mess to exit and stuff and it doesn't really work well so you want to do two trades split the risk in half and then trade with that okay now we'll look at the trade see what that trade was like and we did a system where you get a comment for every trade i'll just hover the mouse on this trade over here on my uh, platform and i will see this ends with and this is like really small but ends with six zero that means the trade was, was taken on a one hour chart okay so instead of like because here it didn't make much sense i'll go on a one hour chart on easy gpy and here we'll see the trade so this was a trade like this okay so i this was not triggered because of the fact that we enter five pip beyond the low and this was not five pip okay so you see here it's going to be deleted that's what's shown on the chart that was kind of a valid setup no trade okay and this is also of course based on the zone okay so what i'll do over here is i'll apply the template of uh usd gpy so you guys can see what that looks like okay and we'll just zoom out a little bit we'll go on a weak chart because that's going to be better and you can see over here this is a zone where price reversed in the past so a resistance area okay it here's really simplistic because i only have two lines that, that put the bottom and the top of the resistance area on any view we'll see more but here it's just to give you an idea of like this is like where it's at and if price were to break that upper line at 114.8 to me that's like too high that that's not good that that's not a good trade the highest we've gone was here but when we reversed like in the past right we were only at this point so like a little bit below the zone so we just want to place the zone like this and then monitor again every single day the trade setup here would have been a winning trade but because of the five pip rule which we could lower it's not a big deal i tend to do like usually that or a little bit less depending on the chart and volatility but that is not taken here, okay? And price ended up going down. But if you were to just like enter below the lost trade, which I tend to do when I miss a trade, then you would have taken this trade that would have been a perfect trade and it would be in profit. Okay, so just to show you the process and the fact that you might miss trades, you might not take all the trades, but overall, look at what your process does and look whether you do the same thing all the time. And that's gonna dictate usually your success because you cannot change your five pip rule every time. That's, that's ridiculous. So take something, apply it, then be consistent with that over and over again. Okay, so this is it for USD GPY. We'll go on your USD over here. And this should show us the trade right there. This was a trade taken on the forward chart. In this particular trade, it didn't go beyond also the five pip rule. Okay, so you can look at like the close if you want to. We'll just take that tool over here so from there three pip okay so three pip seems to be working fine but again if you were to take that trade without the five pip rule beyond a candlestick which we've tested by the way to be better overall then you would have taken this trade this would have been a pretty good trade okay so just have to readjust and we might like compute and see that the results are different for this but we'll see for now the five pip rule we've tested works best when we do something like a systematic system where you don't look at the support and resistance areas but for now like two trades that have this rule not work well it's surprising so we might evaluate with the support and resistance areas see if it's better with it or without the five pip rule five pip beyond the counseling that we enter or not so we'll, we'll have to take a look at that okay but that's it for your usd now i believe at the same time we also had a trade on euro cap so we'll put the EuroCAD and this trade was triggered as you can see. So we had the same setup over here, price going down, angle from candle over here, you enter above the high, suppose so below the low, and you want to risk of three to one. Now what you see here is the one to one. Okay, you can scroll back a little bit and we'll see the three to one. This is the other order, okay, that's beyond the point. So same thing here and actually I will take this template that we have right over here for the pair to look at the zone 
and you will see that price is now in a support area okay so we'll go on the weekly chart and you will see that price kind of reversed here in the past uh, let me just zoom out a little bit okay so here price came back down this is what a resistance area came into support later on over here and now we're back there okay so good place to look for bullish setup in my opinion and we had a setup right there we'll see what happens with it but it's a good setup in my opinion was taken with the system with the ea and that's pretty cool that's awesome next trade use the sjd a profitable trade let's have a look at that and this was taken on the four hour chart which is awesome so we were at a resistance area where we're like really close to it i think last week i think we went even in it breaking beyond the bongjo band and open candle you enter below the low five pips of loss stop loss above the high and we were to risk of three to one this is a three to one the one to one was reached over here took partial profit here now it's kind of a risky trade so if price were to come back and hit the stop loss that will be in a, like a zero break even trade but we'll see what happens with this and we had the opposite setup here but i don't close the trade over this setup right there with the engulfing candle because of the fact that we are at a resistance area and it's kind of normal for price to push back go in the opposite direction like do a, a retracement or pull back and then fall back in the direction of your trade after so no problem with this in my opinion okay and yeah this is based on the i think 1.39 resistance area that we can see over here because of this line right there that goes through this high this one over here this one there and coming back here okay so that's a pretty strong one in my opinion this is it for usd sjd and there was a couple of other trades so another example over here and i think the ea was running with a slightly less reliable way than what i'm trading now which is like we look at setup even if only one classic breaks outside of Hong japan like you see here only one was breaking outside the small kind of stick over there but the entry was triggered anyway and the trade was like not entered because we didn't go five pip below the low on the next candlestick and that's about it for the trade and this was of course at a resistance area which we see over here this low turned into a resistance area and we also have this high over here that kind of make the zone which is pretty cool but that's it for the trade now you know gbp and there is setup over here that was not entered and this one we didn't go at all beyond the high okay we just like fall down it's pretty much what happens sometimes you just have to deal with it and cool thing is that the ea can recognize that and we have rules around it so that we don't enter trades that are not good and of course it would have been in your favor later that would just big up move but we want to minimize the risk and that's what this rule of entering beyond the high plus five pip is for gpchf we talked about that earlier so i won't go into that one and here we have JPUSD. So again, this was a trade where only one candlestick was breaking outside the Bong Chiban. This one over here, forget this trade over here. This was taken the past week, not really good. But this one here, uh, yeah. So one candlestick outside, this one over here. And you turn five feet below the low. Was not triggered, of course, until here, but that's too late. We close, we cancel the order, one candlestick after the trigger, and that's it. So no, no trade here, but we are at a resistance area at 1.32 1.31.32 where we've passed in the past and that is it for this trade euro aod was a profitable trade as well well for now i believe we had one one exit triggered and i think the other one was also triggered so break even trade and we'll go through that i think that's interesting to look at so let's go on the right time frame the forward chart right here so we had this break of the long band by this candle over here push up breaking outside uh, just a little bit strong off in candle in the opposite direction went there build the low five pip beyond the low of course and stop loss above the high and then we were to risk of three to one here's the three to one the one to one was like here so good thing and then the trade is still open right now because we didn't reach the stop loss yet but we'll see whether price comes back down or push back up in both cases it's fine here's a trade that was a losing trade on gp gpy so again push back up and golfing candle you enter below the low five feet beyond the low stop loss above the high you are to risk of 3 to 1 and 1 to 1 price just shoot up here we went beyond the high so stopped out and it was a losing trade usd cad we had a trade setup 
So on this pair, we're looking for bullish setup. The setup we had was this one there. So here, push below. And we are a little bit above the zone. Like we just bounced here before the zone. Now we went above. We look for kind of pullback trades. A little bit above the zone. And that's what we have over here. So in top of the high supply, below the low. And we are to risk of 3 to 1. And notice how here we have a lower low, right? Before the engulfing candle. So we'll get this low, not this one there. And that's just better in my opinion. So this trade was not triggered because the next candlestick we fell back down. And it's a good thing because the reward will be strapped out later. Okay. So that's it for USD CAD. And we are keep in mind at the 1.3D support area. And you can go back to watch the review for last week. We talked about all of that plus more. So go watch. It's going to be linked below and you can see all the zones we identified. And they're going to be pretty much the same for this week. No big change. Next, we have GPUSD and EURGBP. Both were not triggered. This one over here was this kind of stick right there. So not triggered because it didn't go 5 pip above the high. And this one there on GPUSD was not triggered either. With the lesser rule, once again, where we look at only one candlestick breaking outside, we have only one here, the engulfing candle, not breaking outside. It's less reliable, but I just want to test it out and see. We enter below the low, stop loss above the high, and you are to risk of 3 to 1, which I think is here or below. But anyway, not triggered because of the fact that we didn't go 5 pip below on the next candlestick after the engulfing candle. And that's it for the trade. So we've gone through all of that. I hope you guys like this. This is like really long, 25 minutes now on the camera. Hope you like this. I'll cut it short right here. Thanks for watching. Comment below with your thought once again. Give a like if you enjoyed this video today. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you back here tomorrow. Ciao.